All right, deep divers, ready to dive into some project management goodness. Always up for a deep dive, especially when we're about to go old school cool. You heard right. We're ditching the jargon and unearthing some timeless wisdom from, get this, a 1986 training journal article. 1986. Now that's what I call a blast from the past. What oh. treasure did you dig up? We're talking about project management techniques for training development by Guy W. Wallace. Picture it. December 1986 issue of Chicago Performance and Instruction Journal. We've got the vintage journal cover, the table of contents, the whole shebang. Sounds like you've stumbled onto a gold mine. I'm already intrigued. What kind of wisdom did Mr. Wallace drop back in 86? Oh, he doesn't waste any time. He opens with a real zinger, a question that'll probably resonate. How often has your training development project gone off track? Oof, I felt that one. We've all been there, right? Projects hitting the skids, timelines going haywire. It's a universal struggle. He's talking unrealistic expectations, those unexpected surprises that throw everything off course. The works. And he doesn't just point fingers, he dives into what causes these derailments. Let me guess. Poor communication, mm. goals that are about as clear as mud, and the classic lack of planning. Nailed it. It's like trying to build a skyscraper on a foundation of sand. But here's the kicker. The number one culprit, according to Wallace. Mistrust. Mistrust. That's an interesting one. You wouldn't think that'd be top of the list for project management. Right. But it makes sense when you think about it. A client's been burned before. A project's gone sideways. They're coming in guarded, maybe even a little jaded. Past experiences cast long shadows. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like they're saying, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice. Mm. Well, you get the idea. So how do you combat this mistrust? What's Wallace's antidote? Meticulous project definition, and I mean meticulous. He even lays it all out, key elements, the works. Imagine a giant flip chart, bold lettering. Oh, I love a good visual. What's on this project management flip chart from the past? We're talking project background, the why, the scope, the deliverables, everything. He even includes mapping out the entire process, roles and responsibilities, milestones. Nothing is left to chance. It's like building trust brick by brick. When everything's defined up front, crystal clear, it's reassuring. No surprises, just a solid plan everyone can get behind. Solid advice, even if it is from the era of shoulder pads and leg warmers. Speaking of which, get this, his method for achieving this meticulous definition is classic 80s flip charts and a whole lot of what he calls tough skin. Wait, tough skin? What does that even mean in a project management context? Picture this. You're in a room with the client, but instead of sleek slide decks, you're scribbling their every word on a giant flip chart. No sugarcoating, no reinterpreting, just their raw vision captured for all to see. Now, that's an approach I haven't seen in a while. I can see how that would require some thick skin, especially if the client's got some, shall we say, constructive criticism. Exactly. You're not just taking notes. You're becoming a scribe to their vision. Every scribble on that flip chart reinforces that this is their project, their baby, and Let's be honest, capturing their vision in their own words minimizes the chance of those dreaded surprises later on. It's so simple, yet so brilliant. By stripping away all the bells and whistles, you're getting to the heart of what really matters. Understanding. It's refreshing, isn't it? Taking us back to the basics, focusing on human connection. And that sets the stage for the next critical step, planning, where Wallace's wisdom really shines through. Oh, I can't wait to hear this late on me. What golden nuggets of planning wisdom did we unearth from the depths of 1986? So planning. Wallace, back in 86, was all about that Gantt chart life. Gantt charts. Classic. I'm guessing they haven't gone out of style. You can say that again. They're everywhere. Though back then, they might not have had fancy software for it. They're probably breaking out the rulers and colored pencils, I'd imagine. But a Gantt chart's a Gantt chart. Visual timeline, right? Tasks, dates, boom. Right. But Wallace was next level. He didn't just want the visual. He wanted a detailed narrative to go with it. A one-two punch, you could say. A narrative? Yeah. Intriguing. Tell me more about this two-part system. How'd that work? It's like this. You've got your Gantt chart, all visual, laying out the timeline. But then for every single task on that chart, boom, detailed explanation. Who's responsible? What needs to happen? Every nitty gritty detail. It's like he anticipated people wanting all the juicy details, not just a pretty picture. Some folks need that granular breakdown. Exactly. Visual learners, detail-oriented folks, everyone gets what they need. And, you know, even today, that's huge. Teams are all over the place, different communication styles, the whole shebang. This approach, it bridges that gap. Smart. Recognizing that everyone processes information differently. That's a timeless insight right there. But even with a killer plan, communication's key, right? 
Can't just set it and forget it. You took the words right out of my mouth. Wallace was big on this. Keep the client in the loop, always. He even warns against letting clients be caught off guard. Back then, communication wasn't as instant, so even more important. Right. No Slack messages or quick emails. Probably a lot of phone calls and memos. Exactly. And get this. Wallace was all about those frequent written updates. Imagine getting a memo detailing every milestone hit, every challenge tackled, reassurance delivered right to your desk. Building that trust one update at a time. I like it. Yeah. But I can also see how some clients might find that overwhelming, all those updates. Oh, absolutely. Wallace recognized that. He stressed gauging the client's comfort level. Don't drown them in memos if they're happy with the big picture. A balancing act, for sure. Knowing your client, adapting your communication style. Funny how some things never change, even with all our fancy project management tools today. It's wild, right? This blast from the past, this article from 86, it's like peeking into a time capsule. Yeah. And you know what? The more things change, the more they stay the same. Totally. We might have fancy software now, mm -hmm. but the heart of it, the human element, that never gets old. Exactly. So, deep divers, what's the takeaway? Well, next time you're staring down a brand new project, remember, those fundamentals, they still hold true. It's like having a vintage compass guiding you through uncharted territory. Love that. So whether you're team whiteboard or team project management app, those core principles, clear communication, meticulous planning, building trust, they're your recipe for success. Timeless wisdom unearthed. Who knew a 1986 training journal would be our guide to modern-day project mastery? Right. Sometimes the best way to move forward is to take a step back. Until next time, deep divers keep exploring, keep asking questions, and keep unearthing those hidden gems of knowledge wherever you might find them. Mm -hmm.